Let's, Let's go, go, Matt. Matthew. Come on, bro. Let's go, Matthew. Come on, Matthew. Oh, bro. Let's go, Matt. Uh, Let's go, Miami. Oh, Matt. It's going to be really, really good. Thanks, bro. Jason, I got your back. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, <laughs> it's uh, good to be here this evening, family. I hope everybody's excited to hear the word of God. I'm uh, Come very on, Matthew. excited. Yeah. Come on, bro. Um, you know, so it's, uh, it's awesome. Uh, I was I was super shocked. They called me. I think I I think it was Wednesday or Tuesday. They're like, "Hey, we want you to preach the eighth year anniversary for campus devotional." You know, that's what we're gonna call it. <laughs> Come on, bro. Anniversary for the campus devotional. I feel honored. Exactly super what we're Super on, great. Let's go, bro. Thank you, Tyler, for just uh, thinking about me. Uh, thank you. Um, no, but I'm super excited, guys. I'm super excited to be able to preach the word. You know, it's been awesome to see the church growing, to see the campus ministry continually to forcefully, continually, continue to forcefully advance. Um, and it's just been so cool. You know, we had the greatest month ever with 17 additions, the most baptisms we had in one month. I mean, it's so awesome to see how triumphantly the church is growing right now. And, um, you know, I, I, I thought about what was I going to preach tonight? What, what was I, I going to say to the campus ministry? Arguably the most fired up group on, in the whole church. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh, Matthew. That's right. Oh, Super oh, Matt. What would I tell oh, them? Thank you. How would I thank spur you. them on? Bring How would I bro. push us to do uh, even greater things through the word of God? Bring what would I say? Bro. What would I do? What scriptures would I use? And, and I, I thought of this lesson because... We've done some great things, and it's been incredible. But have we absolutely swallowed the Bay Area? Not yet. And so we still got work to do. And that's got to excite you. That's got to put some vigor inside of you. That's got to light a fire up under your bones that we still get to go out and conquer what is left of the Bay. We've got a lot to do. Let's go, bro. So I'm excited. I'm excited to get into the word of God. I'm excited to see you guys. Come on, Matt. To make Come decisions. Bro. I pray that you do make some radical decisions tonight as I've looked at this myself and I, I, I got convicted at what I'm going to preach tonight. And so I hope everybody on, walks away inspired. Cheers, um, the title of my lesson tonight is just that. Let's take the bay. Let's go, bro. 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 Hey, family, we have to take the bay. This is what God has given us. This is where we have set our feet. And so God has given it to us. Now we need only to take it. Let's turn our Bibles over here to Genesis chapter 1. Let's take it, bro. Come on, Matthew. Come on, Matt. You know, there are a couple things we're going to have to do if we really want to take the bay. If we really want to conquer and I really want to challenge us from this lesson here to just, just take what the scriptures are teaching. Let's take it to heart. Let's make decisions to change and watch God do great things through us. In Genesis chapter 1, in verse 1, the Bible reads, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. You know, let's pause right there. I, I love this passage of scripture because it's the incredible account of the creation. You know, it, it illustrates God's beginning work on actually creating the world that we now know called earth. It says the earth began as it was formless and empty. It was an object that had darkness that surrounded it. And that God's spirit was hovering over the surface of a great depth of water, waiting for just the right time, just the right moment, for God to orchestrate all the times and places for his spirit to, to bring light to this dark and deep world called earth. You know, I believe this scripture not only gives us a vision of how God sees the creation, which is the world, but I believe it perfectly illustrates God's creation of the human heart. After all, I think what we need to understand is that, that God never intended to want geography. He never intended to want technically like specific land, the whole plan of God. He never really wanted to conquer kingdoms, but God ultimately wants our hearts. Come on, bro. And at those times, you know, when, when, we, were, when we were Christians, before we were Christians, we were formless. We had no character. 
We were empty. We filled ourselves with whatever we could get our hands on only to find ourselves not to be able to fill the void that where God should have been. And darkness surrounded the surface of the deep, the deep aspects of our heart. Because what does Proverbs 20 verse 5 say? The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws it out. Was that not what happened when you studied the Bible? There were deep aspects of the heart that were untouched, unkempt, and you just had to allow God's spirit to get in. And you started to deal with the depths. Come on, Come on bro. Come on, bro. The spirit was hovering over this fragile, combustible thing called our hearts. And at just the right time, at just the right moment, after God orchestrated all the times and places, God said, let there be light. And his spirit, the spirit of God, penetrated our hearts through his word. And at that moment, we were given the opportunity to deal with what's inside. My first point for you is, if we're going to take the bay, if we're going to conquer the lands that God has allowed us to set our feet upon, we've got to do a couple things. My first point for you is, deal with the depth of your heart. Ooh, come on, bro. Come on, man. Deal with the depth of your heart. You know, some of us, when we heard that, we're like, hold on. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. How about no? <laughs> um, I, I want to plead with you. I want to beg you. I want to implore you. I want to beseech you to please take heed to what the scriptures and what this point is all about. Oh, you know, at that moment that, that, that God says, let there be light, there's this, this magnificent exposure to the truth of the universe. You finally know what your purpose is, knowing who the creator is knowing what's really wrong with the world, knowing things you never thought, knowing, not having knowledge you never thought you could attain. Things you'd only be able to taste if, uh, a tip of even, but only if you tried some hallucinogens or some drug that altered your mind. You get to see all oh, that's in your heart, the sins that are in your heart. You know, when you first read Galatians 5 and you were just like, holy moly, you walked out of the light and dark and said, it was like, oh my gosh. I finally know what sin is. And now you just see it everywhere. Just see it everywhere. Like yeah. you, just, you look in the mirror, you're like, dang, I'm in sin. I don't even, I don't even know why, but I'm in sin. I know. Amen. <laughs> Somebody tell me, you know, uh, but it, you finally get to see this great mountain as we do this mountain of sin in your life. And you know, God, he, he, he begins, he starts out on the surface of the deep. And I believe so it is with our hearts that God takes us deeper and deeper with the monumental words of let there be light. Let's go. Wow. Awesome. Let there be light. And it happens time and time again as God goes deeper and deeper and deeper into your heart. He says, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. And some of us are like, stop, I don't want no more light. It's too much for me to handle. Come on, bro. Preach that. Because God loves you, he exposes you. Come on and says, conquer, deal with the depths of your heart. Wow. But you know, it's funny, sadly, just as much as we'd rather discover what's going on in outer space mm. and know more about that, which is great, you know, we fear the depths of the ocean. You know, we know more about space than we do about the actual ocean that we have here on earth. Wow. Mm. We know more about what's going on on the outside. You know, us as Christians, we wanna know like, hey, how do I disciple this sister that did not take care of the chore this week? How do I disciple this brother that, that decided to, to talk to me a little bit sharp and was a little disrespectful? How do I deal with the evangelizations of the nations in this generation? How do I deal with all this? But how do we deal with evangelizing? Sure, I'm sorry, I got you. How do we deal with Say that. those things? Oh, wow. Come on, bro. You know, I believe that as, as, as God evangelizes our hearts, he can thus use us to evangelize the world. But as long as he can grasp your heart, it's the only time that you're most useful to him. Boom. You know, I think the mission field of our heart is the most unevangelized place in the world. Oh! And some of us look at it and like, that's too dark. That's far too much. I don't want anything to do with what's going on in there. There are two types of people. I say actually, you know, well, I'm gonna to relate to just one really. There are those that bottle up their emotions. There are those that don't want to deal, so what do they do? Either they bottle them up or they act like nothing's wrong.
they just keep going and they just keep going forward and try to forget about everything and try to suppress what's going on. And what happens, you bottle it up and you become this explosion. Wow. And you find yourself in a place where you could have been growing, but you find out that you stunted your growth because you decided not to deal with the depths of your heart. Wow, wow come on, man. That's you know, awesome. we wanna take the bay, but God wants to take your heart. Wow. And he wants to take it to the ends of the earth. Come on, brother. But he's got to capture your heart. And it only can happen if you allow God continually. When he says, let there be light, that you take hold of what he puts in front of you, and you deal with it. You deal with it. You know, I, I can relate, you know. I, I'm, I'm a guy that I, I do not like to deal naturally. Mm. I, I do not like it, you know. Oh, Come on, bro. Yeah. Um, Jason, you agree? Thanks. Um, <laughs> but Doing really good, bro. I think it's so true, you know, like I, I you, you go through a couple of things as a kid and you start to like, you start this as a, at a very young age, you start stuffing things. You start like yep. putting it to the side, put it to the back burner. Like, Hey, that, that didn't happen. That did not happen. Yeah. And when somebody asks you about your past, you're like, either you're very standoffish. You're like, let's not talk about that. Or you suppress this so much. You forgot about it. Yeah. Come on, bro. Mm. What has happened? What has happened? This, this place that's supposed to be where, where God can have his spirit cover over it, it's a hardened place. To where the word, as it says in the parable of the sower, can't even penetrate. It's like walking on a stone path. Wow. Because we don't deal with what's going on in our hearts. But, but thank God for discipleship, right? Thank God for discipleship. Oh, yeah, thank God. Uh, thank God oh, for man. Christianity, you know. Uh, I remember one time with, uh, with Quake, you know, you might be wondering, like, say, how do I deal with the depths of my heart? Well, I, let me let me tell you the kind of discipling I got. You know, uh, I you know, I just, Thank you. it's really good. It's super good, and it's oh, very nice. simple. Let me put this before you. It's the most simple thing ever. You might be like, you know what? I got to do a working through my past, and you really understand kind of the genesis of where this comes from, and maybe talk about the 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 the, uh, the, the generational things that are going on. Why did this happen, and and all the intricate details and all that stuff. And that might be good. That might be good. But the reality is once you find what's going on in your heart, you know the simple way, if you want peace, because, because you know, it can be a very, very tormenting thing when you find out when God says, let there be light, and you're like, I didn't expect that. And it can start to torment your brain. It can start to really mess with your heart. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is too much. You know the best way to deal with it? The most simple way to deal with it? You know, I, told, bro. I actually told Quakey what I just told you guys. Like, you, you know, you start to work. Come on. Out, understand it and where it came from and all this stuff. He's like, yeah, that's fine. You know, Quaker, very simple. He's like, yeah, that's fine. But you know that you need to just repent, right? <laughs> you, you know Ouch. You, know, ah. you just need to give up everything, right? That just hurt. Because, because well, well, it, it did hurt me, Quaker, more than I think it hurt you. Harsh. No, it hurts me. <laughs> I, I think, just as it says in Luke 14, what are the terms of peace? Some of us are probably not at peace right now. You probably came on the car like, man, I am being tormented like Saul with the evil spirit hovering over my head. And you're like, where's the peace? Where's the peace? The peace is to give up everything, just as when you first became a disciple. Come on, Matthew. Make the decision to give up everything. You know, I had so much built up stuff. I had built up rage. Like, I didn't struggle with anger in the world. I struggled with rage. And it, this is not to be, this is, it was a horrible way of living. I was a miserable person. I was not happy. I developed this skill to be apathetic to where like the way I would deal with things is I just be like, I don't care. And I had this sense of an, a type of ungodly surrender to where I'd be like, yeah, I don't even care about that. So whatever happens to it, it's fine. Anyways, the reality is my heart was just super hard. Wow. Mm. I was this guy. I was the guy that did not deal with the depths of my heart. And there's probably still some things. Let me tell you something. Next week, God might be like, let there be light. And I'll be like, bang. Oh, here we go. Come on, bro. Got to give up everything all over again. And some of us on the call, you might be visiting with us, and your heart is probably just super hard. It's like, what is this guy talking about? Deal with your heart. Deal with your heart. What's that? <laughs> what talking about? I deal with it the way, the way I've been taught. I go make money. I go get pleasure. I go get respect. So nobody's going to think about what's going on in my heart. Let me encourage you. You don't want it to be where you're hitting 50 years old and where the most common age of suicide is 40 to 60 because you've tried everything to kind of suppress what's going on in your heart. 
and you start to consider suicide because you have no meaning. Come, come on, man. You can deal with it now. You can get into the scriptures, deal with it now, or you can wait till it blows up right in your face. Woo! I want to beg us. I want to really call us to and encourage us as a brother in God's kingdom. Deal with the depths of your heart. On, deal with the depths Come of your on, heart. Come on, bro. So you can be set free. You know when you first got open? You first got open and you were like, oh, that was a weight off my shoulders. I feel like 10 pounds lighter. When you deal with your heart, when you give up everything, you're free to do anything. Which leads me to my second point. Come on, bro. After you deal with the depths of your heart, you've got to give from the depths of your heart. Come on. You know, there it is. You know, after you deal, you gotta give. You know, Jesus, on, what did he do in the Garden of Gethsemane? He dealt with his heart. And what did he do? He gave his life. Wow. What did God say in John 3, 16? The most famous scripture. The most famous scripture. It's on your in and out cups. It's the scripture you memorized, didn't even know where it was in the Bible. You memorized you the KJV because nobody uses NIV. I don't know why in the religious world when it's so much easier to understand, but you memorized the scripture, but never understood the magnitude of the scripture. It says, for God so loved the world, he gave. He gave his only begotten son so that we, could have the life that we now live. So God's lifestyle was a, is a lifestyle of constant giving. Wow. What does Jesus say? My father's always at work, orchestrating the times and places for what? And this is what we're gonna talk about, for the church. God has orchestrated wow. history. There, there's this cool book, it's called Destined for the Throne, which essentially what it talks about is the fact that all of history, everything in history, if you think about it, was orchestrated around the times to set the perfect time for the church in Acts chapter two in 29 AD to actually come to fruition. So true, it's it amazing. All given, history was given. Come on, bro. The church could be established. Come on, bro. And we've been grafted, we've been adopted as sons and daughters. We've been birthed into this new kingdom that God has established. And what does he expect of us? That we give. Anybody who loves Jesus will walk his, and do as Jesus did. We've got to live like him. And as he gave up his life for the church, we've got to lay our lives down. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Look it over in Ephesians 4. Come on, man. Ephesians 4. Let's go, four. bro. Come on, bro. We're good, bro. That's good water right there. Go, man. Let's go, man. Pitch it, bro. That picture right there. Yeah, cool, bro. Ephesians 4, verse 11. It says, so Christ himself gave the apostles. See, here it goes. God giving again. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach a unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of, the pe of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is an incredible passage of scripture, but what it's detailing is God in his, in his profound knowledge and wisdom doesn't just give us a church, but he gives us structure and order. For what purpose? So that the body of Christ may, it might be built up. What would that oh, might bro. be dependent upon? Well, it says it here in verse 16, as each part does its work as each part go, to the church as each part gives to each other so that we can edify each other and grow to be mature in the faith come on Matt. come on matthew it's awesome come on bro you know the body of christ is a beautiful thing it's awesome to be in the kingdom of god absolutely you know, let's go you know but just as paul says that he fills up in his flesh what is lacking 
Mm -hmm. his afflictions. Which, where did he face his afflictions? In the body. Come on. Where did he take the blows? In his body. Mm. What is it going to take to hold this thing together? It's going to take men and women filling up in their flesh, willing to lay their lives down, to give to what God bought with his own blood. Come on. Jesus himself left his throne, set down his crown, and died for his enemies mm. so that we could have the safe place in God's kingdom. Wow. Come on, bro. I want to call us that each part of the body has got to do its work. Well, you might be asking, well, well, well I, I'm in the body for sure. For sure. I'm super in it. Super, super in it right now. <laughs> but but, but how, do you, bro. how do I do the work? What well, says each ligament supports itself. Well, how does that happen, Matthew? Since you're telling me to give, there's this culture of giving. You're saying God is, he's always giving. Well, yes, you're right. Look over at Romans 12. Rich, bro. Oh, yeah. Bro. Oh, bro. Come on, bro. Tell us. In Romans 12, in verse 3, it says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Now, what it just got done saying is, is actually in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, offer your body as a living sacrifice. Then it goes into how to actually give to the body of Christ. What, is, what should somebody act like in the body of Christ? So it says, offer yourself as a living sacrifice. And then it kind of knows that it has to give us a little intel and detail of how that looks. So it says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with, with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy it in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. <laughs> you know, I love this passage of scripture because it actually details a couple, a couple of ways that you, you, know, you look at yourself with sober, sober judgment. Look at what God has given you the ability to do. Come on, man. And some people are given these aspects more than others. Some people like Stephen G, you, in the, if you know, in the, in the church, G-Man has a talent to serve. Yeah. The best. Oh, absolutely, 100%. To serve. Powerhouse. Rob, Rob, Uncle Rob has a talent to give and to shepherd. And so what is he does? Yeah. Religion. Ole? Ole has the has the talent to preach God's word. So oh, he yeah, does it preach it, bro. He does it faithfully. Christian too. And, <laughs> and and I'd say in a real way, these are things, yes, some, like I said, are given these these talents in greater proportions than others, but all these things that we just looked at are all things that any one of us can learn how to do. Do it. Any one of us can learn how to encourage. Any one of us can learn how to give. Any one of us can learn how to teach. Any one of us can learn how to preach. Any one of us can learn how to lead. But this is how we give to God's body. But you have to think about it. If we don't give to the body of Christ, what happens? What happens? You know, uh, me and the guys, uh, just about every single one of us have been working out pretty, uh, pretty seriously here. Yeah. Um, we'll take it Super seriously. Uh, and I, I, I think, uh, you notice what happens before the, let me just be open. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When quarantine started, um, I, I immediately, I just stopped working out. Like I just stopped. Amen, bro. Thanks for being open, bro. Amen, uh, bro. Relatable. And, uh, you know what happens when you, there it is, Jason. That's what we're talking. Those are twenties though. What is Jason? <laughs> 50s in there. Let's get some fifties. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we're just going to put it down now. But, what happens when you stop to use the body and function and every part does its function? What, what happens when some part of the body doesn't function? Well, you can have paralysis. What's the opposite of a full functioning body? You have paralysis. Yeah. Wow. You can't fully function if your legs, the whole bottom half of your body does not function, right? And what is paralysis? It's the loss of the ability to move and sometimes to feel anything. 
Amen. Deal with the depths of your heart. Don't numb out. And a par- in part or most of the body, typically as a result of illness, poison, or injury. You know, I think the illness that can stop us from giving to the body is just a lack of faith and a lack of conviction. Wow. Wow. Come on, bro. A lack of faith and a lack of conviction. When somebody decides not to give, they've lost their faith Mm. and they don't have deep convictions in the scriptures. And our body can go through even a, a set of diseases, which is encompassed under the thing called muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy, where your body doesn't function at its full capacity, and you can't you can't do you can't put out as much as you would like. I want to ask this a question. Snap. Every part of its body, every part of the body has its function, right? And everybody has a role, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Right? I'm right about that. Yeah. Yep. Yes, sir. Um, yep. So you've got to ask yourself a question: Have you been a paralyzed part of the body? Oh! Ooh, wow. Well, Ouch. Oh. well, functional part of the body. Oh, man. Have oh, you man. not poured yourself out as much as you could? Mm. You know, something I'm working on with my guys is uh, this concept called Project Limitless. Oh, okay. And then one of the things, that, you know, Jesus taught like the, uh, the most profound teachings that, that the greatest of us struggle with. Concepts like making yourself nothing. Oh. Surrender, denying yourself, right? And being humble. <laughs> These are the four things I'm really focused on in Project Limitless. And some of us are like, yeah, I've served. I've served. I've served. Super have served before this. I've done it a couple times. But how many of us are servants of the body? We've got to pour ourselves out for the body family. This is not something that it's like a, it's like a, it's like a stylistic thing. Like some of us give and some of us don't, you know, JP really gives to the body and so does Isaiah. But, but you know, me, um, for me, um, I'm a little bit on the, on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, I have different functions. So I'm the part that doesn't give. No, no, no. The scripture teaches here that every part depends on each other. Mm. Come on, man. You know, I know you're not like, hey, you know, my back is hurting. How about I just, you know, take my spinal cord out? Let's just take that out. Let's toss that bad boy. Yeah, I don't need it anymore. It's super dysfunctional. I think I just toss it out. Let's just get rid of it. You, you, every part of the body needs to function at its full ability. You know, I think we have an opportunity to function fully as the body of Christ. We've got a couple opportunities. You know, as, uh, as we just got out of the, the, the uh, September to remember, and it was in great way a September to remember. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. 17 <laughs> Baptist. I mean, it's incredible what God did. But just as Jason announced at, at staff, the studies have progressively gone down. And you know what's the greatest pumping, pumping the line of studies? You know what part of the church does that the most? It's the campus ministry. And so I've got to ask us, have we got a little muscular dystrophy in the past couple of weeks? Come on, bro. Talk about it, man. Have we got a little paralyzed? Have we been bedridden? You know, your body starts to deteriorate if you're bedridden for too long. It's actually not good for you to stay in bed. Amen. What's the first part of your body that actually yeah. loses some of its function is actually your lungs. Because gravity's not pulling down on your lungs as it should, as it's tipped, like as it's used to. And so you start to lose. What happens? Have you noticed yourself being more tired during the quarantine? Oh. Probably been resting a little too much there. Ugh, let me just put that before you. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, man. I don't look at things as obstacles. Just to be honest with you guys, I don't look at them as obstacles. I look at them as opportunities. We have an opportunity to give from the depths of our heart and pour ourselves out for the body of Christ, to fill up in our flesh what is still lacking in regards to Christ's afflictions. There on, are bro. still people waiting for Ashton. There are still people waiting for Malaya. There are mm. people waiting for Nazim. There are people waiting for Desper. There are people waiting for Kay Buka, for Esteban. Come on. I mean, the world is waiting for us to give from the depths of our hearts. Let's go, bro. Come on, Matthew. Not just the Bible studies. I want to call us to blow out special missions, oh, family. Oh, go, Matt. I mean, we've always blown out special missions, but let us get a, a dogged determination to take it personal. Yeah. 
like Bible studies is not the responsibility of just our leaders, our region leaders or our church leader. The responsibility has got to be on us as individuals. This is the body of Christ. I'm taking ownership. I play a role in this body. I'm going to give with everything I've got to this body because if I don't function as one part of the body suffers, so the other parts suffer along with it. You might be thinking, well, if I'm not functioning at my full capacity, I'm just hurting myself. You're wrong. You're hurting your brothers and sisters around you. Wow. We are only as strong as the weakest amongst us. Yeah. We've all got to give. Some are like, well, I, I'm not strong enough to give. I just say you're just not committed to giving. Make a decision to give everything you've got. Well, you're, I only have a little bit to give. Go in the strength that you have. You've got Let's to go, go man. The mountain on, bro. right now. You have the power. You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you if you're a baptized, sold out disciple. That is the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. You can get back up and you can give from the depths of your heart. Come on, mm, come come on, on bro. bro. Let's go, Matt. Let's go, Matt. Please, brother. You know, there's a quote. Don't know who it's by, but I heard it from this song. It says, the word is not simply a scribbled symbol or a spoken sound. The word is not like a roaring lion that no one really fears. No, the word has power. And it can be your most trusted friend or your most terrible foe. You see, like a seed, the word gives life. Like a lamp, the word gives light. Like a mirror, the word reflects. Like water, the word washes. Like fire, the word cleanses. Like a hammer, the word shatters. Like a sword, the word cuts. Oh, but like medicine, the word heals. And like a counselor, the word comforts. You see, the word is alive and it is waiting, waiting for you to summon it like a soldier and send it forth into battle. So preach. My third point for you is preach with all your heart. Ooh. Come on, bro. Go mad. When you've dealt with the depths of your heart and you're ready to give from the depths of your heart, it's time to preach with all your heart. All right. It's time to pour yourself out, sharing your faith. It says in Romans 10, 14, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without somebody preaching to them? The world is waiting for us to rise up as the preachers, to set free the captives, to bind up the brokenhearted. The world is waiting. The world is waiting on Brianda. The world is waiting on the people on this call right now to make a decision, to make a decision to preach with all your heart. How? What is the attitude of a preacher? What should be the motto? What should be the mindset of a preacher? Well, I can't help think of a better scripture than John, in Jeremiah chapter 20. Let's turn over there. Come on, Come on bro. Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah 20 in verse 7. It says, you deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. Really? You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. Amen, persecution. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say I will not mention his word or speak anymore in his name. His word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. I hear many whispering, terror on every side. Denounce him. Let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. You know, we've got to preach Bro. with all of our heart. Oh, man. When you got baptized as a sold out disciple, when you made a decision to follow Jesus, you were, in, you were given a spirit there is a fire inside of you. There's a fire shut up in your bones. 
You ever walk past oh, somebody God. and not share your faith and feel super guilty for it? Yes. Fire in your bones. And you're weary. It makes you weary of holding it in. And Jeremiah says, indeed, I cannot. I have to speak. If I don't, their blood is on my hands. The responsibility of taking the Bay Area is on each individual on this call right now. Wow. You are here wow. by the divine orchestration of God's mighty hand. Act 17 is right here. You have to make a decision. I'm going to preach with all my heart. Let me let you know what we're not trying to do. We're not trying to just convey theology or impart knowledge onto people. No, let me tell you what we're doing through a quote from Samuel Adams. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate and tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. See, what we're doing when we sit down with somebody, we study the Bible with them. We are not just some nice church people that want to give them a couple good morals to live by. No, we are literally bringing revolution of the heart, revolution of the world at their doorstep. We are not trying to change their minds a little bit. We are trying to transform these people completely. And the way we're going to do that is when you're ignited with the passion of the Spirit of God and you're ready to change the world. See, we have a responsibility. Yeah. Disciples are not just regular people. We're actually called to be more than mere mortals. We're actually called to a, the highest standard of humanity. As a whole, we're called to be like God himself. We're called to be like him. Come on, bro. And Jesus was a preacher. What did he say in Luke 4? The spirit of the Lord is on me. And the spirit of the Lord is on us. It is inside of us. And it is waiting. God's word is waiting for us to take it up and send it forth into battle so we can bind up all of Satan's possessions and take them back to God's kingdom. I want to challenge us. Get in the delegation this week. Get in the delegation with somebody and call them to give up everything for the sake of God's kingdom, for the sake of what they will get not what they're losing. You're not really losing that much anyways. <laughs> preach that. It's time for us to preach with all of our hearts. Why? Because this is who you were called to be. You know, there's many different ways to give. And it's listed over there in Romans 12. I forgot to mention this, but I got to say this. I got to say it. Making disciples was not something that was a gift. It was a duty. It's who you are. Yeah, man. And so all of Amen. us have to get in the battle. And we've got to become the men and women God is calling us to be. I want to close where we started. Go back to Genesis chapter one. Let me Come tell on. us Come tonight, on, bro. We are. We're going to take the bed. Here's the thing. We are going to take the bed. Come on. If it means pouring every drop of blood, well, I just say I finally met to be like my Lord because he poured out everything. Poured out. In the world. Genesis one and verse 26. Come on, bro. Oh, Super. This was the duty of man since creation. So let me tell us who God always intended us to be since he created us. Verse 26, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. That's who you were called to Come be on, from the man. moment Come of creation. On, Come on, bro. Peter's teaches that God told Adam and Eve, subdue. The earth, it means to take control of. You know, I believe as God continues to evangelize the mission field of our hearts, we will be able to conquer more lands in the bay because you'll be more useful to give from the depths of your heart. Mm. But see, it's on us to make the decision. Some of us have had an identity crisis and even though you became a disciple, you failed to actually come into who you're really called to be. 
You are not mere mortals. You are not regular people walking around on the street. You're more than a conqueror. You are built to be a conqueror of the earth and lay it at the altar of God at the end of this generation. That's who you're supposed to be. Please, bro. We need to make a decision tonight that we are not here waiting for handouts waiting for the bay to be handed to us. Come on, bro. Waiting for somebody to, to give it over is for Satan to let up his army and to let up the demons. You know, right now they're having a Devo of how to stop this group. They're having a Devo of how to stop a group like this, on, a group bro. of unstoppable, spirit-filled disciples. Come ready on. to offer. Let's go. They've got a plan. But let me tell you something. I believe every single one of us will make the decision tonight. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Conquerors. And we're not going to stop. Come on, man. The day that we die. Because we're not asking for the bay. We are not asking. We didn't come to take part. We came to take over. We came to take over. We're not going to Satan and say, hey, you know, we kind of want to take a couple souls from the army of, of 10,000. No, 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 no. We didn't come to ask for the bay. Family, in a loud proclamation, and a loud proclamation. We are shouting with every breath in our bodies, yep. with the fire of the Spirit of God inside of us. Yep. We're not asking for the bay. We have shouted, let's take the bay. And to God be all the glory. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. Let's go, man.